good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, and a very, very warm welcome to this session on forgiveness today. Uh, my name is Manpreet Singh, and I've been associated with Brahma Kumari for almost a year now. And I have learned so much from Brahma Kumaris. I have experienced a lot of inner peace and happiness and bliss being part of uh, this, spirit, non -spir this spiritual organization. And today it's an uh, forgiveness is one of my deepest learnings from all the teachings that I uh, got from Brahma Kumaris. And today I feel blessed that I'm able to share some of my learnings uh, on forgiveness with all of you. So with that, uh, let's start with uh, looking at a brief video. As we all saw in this video, when the little sister had a lot of feelings of, you know, revenge and jealousy for her older sister, she was not able to develop love at all. In fact, she had created a big monster inside her own self, and that monster was basically killing her own self. So when we develop feelings of resentment, hatred, revenge, you know, these feelings just kill our own selves from deep within. And as we saw in the video, you know, once the younger sister translated her feelings, her negative feelings inside into the corresponding positive feelings, when she trans translated her hatred into love, into peace, into forgiveness, she was actually able to kill that inner monster inside. And once the monster got killed, it was very easy for her to develop the love for her sister. So forgiveness is such a powerful 
energy that can help convert any kind of negativity hatred into a very very deep love and peace with that um we'll in this talk we will go over some you know first principles because once we are aligned on the first principles of life then it's very easy to deal with you know, any situation you know including forgiveness in this specific in the in the uh, current talk so i, I you know uh, so i'll ask the first question and i request all of you to actually participate actively here and share your responses on the chat so please answer this question first what is in my control and what is outside my control yes my thoughts are in my control my mind is in my control situations are not in my control absolutely my thoughts my words and actions creating positive thoughts right my feelings yes my peace my response i don't can control others but my reaction and my response are in my own control yes other people's behavior situations are outside my control right you know that economy the weather the stock prices you know all those things are outside my control blessing others in spite of how i feel about them is definitely also in my own control <clears throat> as you know most of you already replied here that you know <clears throat> the only thing in my own control is me my own self when i say me it includes my thoughts my emotions my words and my actions and even within these four things thoughts emotions words and actions the first thing i need to control is my own thoughts once i control my thoughts my thoughts are the one that dictate my emotions how i feel is purely dependent on how on the kind of thought that i choose to create and once i create the thoughts my words are just a natural reflection of my thoughts and my actions are also another just our external reflection of my inner thoughts so the only thing i i need to control as a starting point which is the seed of everything is my own thoughts you know we often end up blaming other people because that's the easiest thing to do that it's because of you that i am feeling angry it's, it's because of you that i'm feeling very very sad today but the reality is that i am the one who is fully in control of my emotions nobody and i mean really absolutely nobody in this world can control my emotions unless i let them control it let's take an example of you know somebody gives me a rotten apple what do i do by default i would just eat the rotten apple i'll fall sick and then i'll keep cursing the other person hey you gave me the rotten apple to eat that is why i am sick now the reality is that the other person only gave me the rotten apple that's it i had a choice i had a choice to either eat the rotten apple or dump the rotten apple into the trash but i did not exercise my option i chose i am the one who chose to eat the rotten apple and hence i am sick so it's not the other person that they gave me a rotten apple that's why i am sick i am the one who ate the rotten apple that is why i am sick so once we get that level of understanding around you know that we always have a choice it's because of me and only me that the way i feel with that let's move on to the first part of our talk around 
what is forgiveness? Uh, I'll request each of you to reply or share your thoughts on the chat on what do you think forgiveness actually means? Yes, letting go and moving on is definitely a forgiveness. Wishing goodwill for others who harm us. Yes. Realizing that what comes to me is because of my own actions. So absolutely nobody to blame. Moving on with a positive mind. Yes. Blessing others. Not thinking about any negativity at all. I know the other person is wrong. I still forgive. Acknowledge the hurt and be kind to your own self. No hatred. Yep. Giving empathy. Yes. <clears throat> Definitely. You know, as most of you actually said already, you know, the, the biggest learning or definition of uh, forgiveness that I learned from Brahma Kumari is that let there only and only be feelings of good wishes and pure elevated thoughts and feelings for everyone. Now, in order for me to have good wishes and pure feelings for others, I firstly need to have good wishes and pure feelings for my own self. I need to stay constantly on a seat, my own seat of self-respect. And the seat of self-respect is a very, very thin line. Once I go a little bit above it, I can reach the line of ego and leave my self-respect. Self Similarly, if I go a little bit down, actually I can fall into a pit of depression. That again is also not self-respect. So the line of self-respect is very, very small and thin line that I need to constantly stay in that line. When I am staying in that line of self-respect, I'm able to have very strong, positive feelings for my own self. And once I think very highly of myself, it is very, very easy for me to think highly of others as well. You know, people, as, as we saw earlier, right, we do not control anyone else. People's reactions are completely outside my control. If I have chosen to forgive them, I am going to develop such a deep, unshakable faith in the core of my heart that this actually never ever happened in the past and this will never ever happen again. I will never think about it. I will not talk to anyone about it. I won't even talk to my own self about it. You know, we often think of a forgiveness as a favor. You know, I'm giving you a, fa I'm doing a favor to you. I'm giving you one more chance. The reality is that forgiveness is not doing a favor to someone else. It means that I am going to empower you with such a strong blessing that all your wrong traits, personality traits will completely disappear. Think of it like a coconut, right? A coconut is very dark and gloomy from outside but guess what what is inside the coconut there's such a sweet nectar of water inside and such a sweet beautiful white colored uh, texture inside that we can, all can eat and enjoy similarly you know <clears throat> we all have these external bodies from outside but the inside part of each one of us is actually the divine being the inner being of each of us is a very, very pure being. It is full of peace. It is full of love. So instead of looking on the external side, on the, you know, uh, physical aspects of things, if you look at the inner being of everyone, 
<clears throat> the inner being of everyone is already very very pure then i i just i need to all i need to do is to empower the other person that they come back into their original personality traits which are very very close to their being divine one of the questions that people often ask is is it enough if i behave and talk as before on face to the other person yes it is true it is important to behave and talk as normal on the face but that's not sufficient forgiveness means that we have actually healed our hurt from deep within we now understand the perspective of the other person and we do not hold them responsible for our pain that is a very very deep point to to have that kind of thought inside myself that i am the one responsible for my pain i am the one who chose to eat the rotten apple hence all my emotions are a result of my own action of eating the rotten apple so once i release the pain once i do not hold the other person responsible in from my heart it will become very easy for me to heal my own self and once i heal myself it's very very easy for me to heal other people as well this brings us to the second uh, basic principle around that we can only give to others what we have inside our own selves in the physical world it is very easy for us to see that if i want to give 1 dollar to a poor person i need to have that 1 dollar with me right if i want to serve food clothing shelter some to a hungry person i need to have money with me to be able to give something to the other person the reality is that the same holds true even for all the non physical things as well if i'm cursing my own self for my own mistakes i actually cannot give blessings to others so in order for me to actually have good wishes and pure feelings for other people i firstly need to have the same quality of good feelings and acceptance compassion love peace for my own self once i fill my own self with acceptance compassion love it becomes very easy for me to accept everyone else as well i realize that i am not perfect and as is everyone else around me with that let's move on to the second part of the talk around why to forgive uh, i'd again like to open it up to everyone and request all of you to share your thoughts on the chat on why you think we should forgive to move on to lighten myself to set my own self free so i do not carry this burden because i also want to be forgiven for to be forgiven help others to move on it's good for me i can connect with myself and the other and the divine and i can clear my own karmic accounts to focus more on me the space that is filled with negativity now gets replaced with positivity yes for my own self rid my own self of negativity very well said so when we actually hold resentment for another person 
we are actually bound to that person or condition by a very, very strong emotional link. That emotional link is actually stronger than steel. As you see on this picture on the bottom left, this chain made of out of steel, right? These chains are physically put in places where we do not want a human to enter because these chains, chains can really bar people from crossing the fence. So when we are actually holding someone a, a resentment a, or any kind of hatred, jealousy, hurt, negativity, jealousy for anyone, we are actually bound to that person with a, such a strong emotional link like a chain made out of steel. The only way to dissolve this deep emotional link is actually forgiveness. Have you seen the picture in the bottom middle? You know, the chain starts to dissolve a little bit as I start to develop good wishes and pure feelings for both myself and others. And this is what actually sets me up for free. As we see in the picture on the bottom right, once, once we forgive, you know, we are able to free our own selves from all this bondage of chains that we were ourselves, we were the ones who were who had imprisoned and handcuffed our own selves. So if I am the one who has handcuffed my own self, it's only me and only me who can release myself from that handcuff. And forgiveness is the deepest tool with which we can free our own selves. Now that brings us to one of the another principles of life here that we always have a choice, right? <clears throat> on this in this picture, you see that when this person is looking on the right side, they actually get to see a beautiful rainbow, very lush green grass, trees, mountains, fresh air. And when the same person turns the face aside, they actually get to see a very, very polluted, polluted environment. You get to see the trash and all kind of dirt and dust around. So the choice is mine. Do I want to look at the bright side of every situation or do I want to look at the ugly side of it? You know, this is one of those choices. And if I make the right choice, I am the one who is responsible for my own happiness and my own inner peace. So let's keep this in mind around that we always and always have a choice. It's never the other person who can hurt me or force me in any kind of emotional at all. I am the one who is choosing my own thoughts at every moment and my thoughts are the ones that are directly resulting into my own emotions. The love compassion, acceptance, forgiveness I give to others actually comes back to me in the form of love, happiness, joy, bliss, freedom. In the physical world, if I have you know $10 with me and I give $5 to somebody else as a donation, I'm only left with $5. So my physical bank balance actually decreases once I give a part of the money to someone else. But guess what? The non-physical world works completely opposite. The more I give to others, the more I earn back. In fact, Brahma Kumari says that we actually earn multi-million times more than what we donate. So the more love and acceptance and compassion and forgiveness I give to others, guess what? I am the one who is earning million times more of love and peace and happiness for my own self. You know, we all humans like to be businessmen, right? We like to do businesses. We like to make sure that any step we are doing 
is actually going to lead us to a profit. So now think of this profit in, a, in the non-physical sense. Think of it as a profit, as a bank balance of not in terms of the physical money, but a bank balance that is of comprises of peace, happiness, joy, bliss, right? The choice that I make to look at the positivity and only have good feelings and pure wishes, that choice of mine of creating those high quality elevated thoughts for both myself and others will come back to me and earn me tremendous amount of happiness. One of the questions that often comes up is that if I forgive others, you know, people start taking me for granted. Now, the reality is that nobody can take me for granted unless I let them take me for granted. You know, we often give the remote control of our life to other people. You know, I give you a remote control and I tell you, hey, you know, I'm giving you this remote control. If you press this remote, this red button on this remote, I will feel very, very sad. And if you press this green button on the remote, I will feel very, very happy. Guess what? What will the other person do? They may have completely best intentions. They may just accidentally press the red button. And I may, I may, I can just start getting hurt. Hey, because somebody else pressed the red button here, I am, I am feeling very sad, very low today. Not only do we give the remote to one person, we give the remote to every single person on the world. Any of them, even accidentally or intentionally, presses the wrong button, I start feeling sad. Now, for me to be happy. Everyone in the world has to press the right button on the remote control. Everyone has to behave perfectly for me. Every situation has to turn out perfectly for me to be happy. Can that ever happen? No. So what do I need to do? I need to take all the remote controls back. Others didn't ask me to give them the remote control. I was the one who gave my remote control to everyone. So I take my remote controls back from everyone. And now there's only one remote control, which is in my own hands. Now I am the one who has the choice. I am the one who decides what quality of thoughts to create and hence the kind of emotions I get. So as Mahatma Gandhi ji says, <clears throat> forgiveness is a sign of strength. It is not a symbol of weakness at all. It requires tons and tons of strength to forgive someone. With that, let's move on to the next part of our talk on how to forgive. This is actually a two step journey. And again, I'd like for all of you to contribute here and share your thoughts on what you think how we can forgive. Separate the pain from the thoughts that is hurting you. Yes. With love, peace, blessings. Think positive thoughts for those who have hurt us. Realize that everyone is playing their part and appreciate each one's part, accept fully, bless wholeheartedly, let go of the resentment. Distinguish evaluation from our observations, yes, no judgments, stay detached. Stop creating suffering de deliberately. Pain is there to teach us. Suffering is self-manufactured. Yes, very well said. So, you know, the first step of forgiveness is that I need to forgive my own self. As we saw that forgiveness actually means having good wishes and pure feelings. And as we also saw as one of the principles that 
we can only give to others what we have inside our own selves. So before I am a, a, before being able to create good wishes and elevated thoughts for others, I firstly need to have that good wishes and pure elevated thoughts for my own self. Once I fill my own self with all the love, peace, happiness, bliss, I can set my own self to be free. With that freedom, I can enjoy such a deep, eternal, inner bliss that is not even describable in words. One of the questions that often comes up is that, is it enough if the other person forgives me? The reality is that no matter if the other person every day keeps coming to me and telling me that I have forgiven you, it's okay, let's move on. No matter how much the other person forgives me and tells me, and even if they have forgiven me deeply from the core of their heart and from their thoughts, I still need to do my own homework. I will continue to be in pain as long as I am thinking about all the past negative things in my own mind. So I have to do my own inner healing myself. Nobody can do that for me. You know, the, typically when we actually make a mistake on our own self, you know, even so, the mistake could be as simple as just sending out a wrong email. You know, we just tend to curse our own self. Hey, Manpreet, you did not even know how to send a nice email. You did not even know how to, you know, say, say a small thank you or please. Right. You know, we criticize ourselves. We, you know, give very kind of wrong emo and emotional hurt to our own selves. Now, the reality is that, you know, I can keep sitting and thinking forever about the past. I can keep feeling guilty and bring the feelings of shame for my own self on how bad I was in the past. Nothing will change in the past. Past is past. No matter any how much guilty or shame I feel for my own self for my past mistakes, I absolutely cannot change the past. And as we all know also that we cannot predict the future. The only thing we can control is the present moment. So I make the choice to create positive thoughts about my own self. I think such high elevated thoughts, I place myself on my seat of self-respect. Once I'm seated on that seat of self-respect, I realize that I cannot change anything from the past. I choose to create positive thoughts for my own self and forgive my own self. I choose to move on. I choose to bless my own self. With that, Let's do a brief, brief exercise here on self-forgiveness together. I request all of you to join me. You know, let's all put our hands on our heart and briefly practice self-forgiveness. Let's think of a mistake that we ourselves have made in the past for which I am not able to forgive myself. A mistake for which I hold myself guilty or shameful. I now realize that I did the best I could at that moment based on my own capacity.
now I have learned the lesson from my mistake. I have a plan on how to improve myself. I promise to myself that I will execute on this plan every single day, every single moment. I accept myself just the way I am. I accept myself in spite of my weaknesses. I accept myself and fill myself with love. I fill myself with peace, happiness, bliss, compassion. I forgive my own self. And now I am free. I have broken the handcuffs. With that, let's look at the second step of forgiveness. We talk about the first step of forgiveness as forgiving my own self, which means creating very high elevated thoughts for myself. The second step of forgiveness is actually to forgive others. And as we saw earlier, you know, the more I forgive others, the more I am the one who actually earns peace, love, and happiness. So I'm forgiving others, not for doing a favor onto them, not as a means of giving a chance to the other person, but because I deserve peace. My happiness is my choice. So in order for me to be happy and peaceful and loved from within, I choose to forgive everyone. I will only create high quality, pure thoughts, good feelings for everyone. Because I have now already filled my own self with that high quality, love, peace, and bliss from inside. One of the big tools for forgiveness that I learned from Brahma Kumaris is actually gratitude. <clears throat> we all are taught from childhood that if somebody says something nice to us, somebody does something kind act for me, I need to go say thank you to them. The reality is that that's actually only being a kindergartner in kindness. Having a real PhD in gratitude actually means having gratitude for those who are not kind to me. This was one of the big shockings to me when I started learning the lessons. Why would I go ever say thank you to someone who is not kind to me? Now, the reality is that when someone is actually not kind to me, that is the moment that actually I am the one who is becoming stronger. When someone gives me a rotten apple, I am the one who makes who gets who gets to becomes a stronger. I am the one who makes gets earns the power to make a distinction between which apple is healthy and which apple is rotten. That is what increases my power of tolerance. This increases my power of acceptance. This increases my powers to make decisions because I am the one making decisions to still create positive thoughts in spite of someone else being not kind to me.
the other bigger tool for uh, forgiveness is actually that thinking of every storm that comes in our life. Our life is not going to be perfect. Nobody's life is perfect at all. Everyone has one problem or the other. Situations come. Now, if we think, if we get tired and frustrated in front of the problems of our life, we are actually becoming weaker and we are letting the problems dominate us. But if we think of those problems as actually our helpers, if we think of those problems as a gift to us, then we can look at those problems from a very, very different angle. It think of a problem like a question paper of an exam. If I pass that question paper, I will do very well. I will earn the degree. You know, we all have gone to high, high schools, earned high school degrees and earned college degrees and all, right? We know that in order to earn a high school degree or a college degree, we all have to pass an exam, right? And in order to pass the exam, we work hard. We study for the exam. To pass, to get good grades in a high school exam, we study not just one day or two days before the exam. We study for the whole year. In fact, we don't not only study in the high school, we also study in the middle school so we can get good grades in high school. And not only that, we have we study good, we study also in elementary schools so that we can eventually serve, you know, earn good grades in high school and then eventually earn good, uh, good grades in the college, the college exams. So for those physical exams of life, the physical college degrees, we all are taught from childhood that we have to learn how to read, how to write, how to you know study math and science, so that we can you know earn the right set of degrees and become financially professionally independent. Now the same thing actually holds true for the exams of life. The problems come to teach us a lesson. They come to make us stronger. They come to make us a better human being. So if I increase my emotional stamina, if I become emotionally very, very strong, then no matter what, no matter how big of a situation comes in front of me, I will be emotionally strong to be able to deal with it. The situation cannot or problem cannot throw me away. I do not think of a problem or situation as a problem at all. I think of it as a question paper of the exam that has come to elevate me and take me to the next level. I think of every problem as a gift. And I say thank you to the problem for coming my way. Just like when the college exams come, we actually say thank you to the exams so that because of all the hard work that I've done, I'm today ready to take my college exams. And I know that because I worked hard, I will do really well in the exams. And hence, I, I'm ready to excited to get my college degree. The same thing holds true in the exams of life as well. If we say thank you to the exams of life, and, and when can we say thank you? When we are ourselves very deeply prepared for that exam. When we are very, very emotionally strong to deal with the problems. One of the questions that also often comes up is, what if the other person does not forgive me? I can think positively and have pure feelings for others, but the other person still keeps on criticizing me. The reality is that we do not need forgiveness from anyone at all. I just need to forgive my own self. Once I realize my mistake, I need to make a plan to alter my own self and make sure I do not repeat the same mistake. And as we saw earlier, that forgiveness is actually a very, very deep strength. So if the other person is not able to forgive me, then I need to send them vibrations of love, acceptance, compassion, peace, happiness with my positive thoughts and blessings the other person will 
become much, much stronger. And guess what? Once they become stronger, they will naturally be able to forgive me. They will be able to forgive them their own selves and they will be able to forgive everyone else as well. They'll be able to enjoy a deep peace and happiness. And as we saw earlier, in the laws of non-physical world, the more I give to others, the more I earn. So I am the one who's eventually going to earn the, you know, my bank balance of love, peace and happiness by sending these vibrations of purity to the other person. So, you know, one of the other deeper questions that comes up often is how to do forgiveness at the level of thoughts and emotions. You know, people say, I understand that, you know, that by holding resentment, I am the one who is hurting my own self. So, and I know that to forgive or by forgiving others, I will be at peace, but I'm still not able to do it at the deeper level of my thoughts and emotions. The two big tools that I have personally learned by being part of Brahma Kumaris is firstly the meditation. We have a daily meditation practice where we all come together and meditate as a group and connect our, to our own inner being. I strongly recommend each of you to actually take the course on Raj Yoga Meditation. The course is actually free and taught every month. We'll post the links for the course as well on the chat window in a few minutes. The second thing that we do, a second big tool for forgiveness at the level of thoughts and emotions is actually to feed the mind with a lot of positive reading every single day. You know, the, the mind creates the thoughts based on the kind of information I feed. So if I'm only reading, you know, news about, you know, where somebody's getting killed or bomb blasts are happening or all kind of negative news, my mind will create that quality of thoughts. Versus if I choose to read positive text and I choose to feed my own mind with lots of happiness and bliss from the divine, then my mind, even the subconscious mind when I'm sleeping, my mind will actually create the positive thoughts. Be happy to share the, you know, the, in, at Brahm Kumaris, we come together and read uh, a daily, a positive text together as a group, as well as individually to fill our own selves with positivity and strong elevated thoughts. So with that, let's actually try to experience a brief uh, meditation here right now. Uh, I will speak, say out some words loud and I request all of you to join me in this meditation. Let's keep our bodies still for a few minutes. Because only in a still body can I have a still mind. In the stillness of mind, I disconnect myself from the external world. I disconnect myself from my body, from my name, from my work, from my family, from all the tasks on my to-do list. I visualize myself as a pure inner being. I, the point of light, am already filled with purity. I 
I am filled with love. I am filled with peace. Till now, I was dependent on others for my happiness. But now, I realize that my happiness is my choice. So I choose to create only good wishes and elevated thoughts for myself. Let's think of a mistake that I made in the past. A mistake for which I was holding myself guilty for a long time. I did the best I could based on my own capacity. But now I have learned the lesson. I have become stronger. I thank the mistake for coming my way. It is only this mistake that taught me the biggest lesson of life. I accept myself just the way I am. I make a plan on how to alter my own self. I promise myself that I will execute on this plan every single day. I forgive myself. I am now filled with deep inner love. I am filled with peace. I am happier than ever before. Now that I am filled with good wishes and pure feelings for the self, I am easily able to radiate these elevated thoughts for others. Let's bring up a person or situation in front of us that we believe caused us hurt. I now realize that it was me and only me who created the hurt and the pain. It was never you at all.
I thank you for everything you did for me. Thank you for making me a better version of my own self. Thank you for making me stronger. Thank you for increasing all my powers. My power of tolerance, my power of acceptance, my power to face, my power to discern between right and wrong, my power to make decisions, my power to detach myself from the physical world. All my powers are much, much stronger now. Thank you. I choose to send only and only elevated thoughts to you. I have a deep, unshakable faith from the core of my heart that you are a pure divine being. I empower you with such strong blessings that your wrong personality, personality traits have completely disappeared. I fill you with love, peace, acceptance, bliss, happiness, joy. I forgive you. I forgive my own self. And now I am filled with inner happiness, peace, and love. I radiate this peace and love to everyone I meet. I am happier than ever before. <laughs>